Now we are going to look at actor and passive voice and we are going to talk about the explanation and exercises or examples given in your book. It is available in chapter five. So active voice, the subject performs the action or the subject is the main actor. In active voice, there is a verb with the direct object. The pattern is subject, verb and object. Now let's have a look on these examples. The dog bit the boy. The dog bit the boy. Aisha will give a presentation on her research project at the seminar. Scientists have carried experiments. So uh, the dog, Aisha, scientists are the actors, right? So, and they are doing different actions. But if we talk about passive tenses, Passive voice tenses or sentences, the subject or actor becomes secondary and the emphasis on, is on the action. So action will become more prominent, prominent in the sentence. So a passive voice verb consists of a form of a verb B plus the past participle. Right? The boy was bitten by the dog. Right? Research presentations will be given by Aisha at the seminar. Experiments have been carried out by the scientists. So you see how the placement of different words have changed. Now, if we look at the um, examples given in the construction in the uh, you know box, the presiding officer voted the committee's recommendation. Sorry, voted ne vetoed. The presiding officer vetoed the committee's recommendation. What will be the passive, of, uh, passive voice of it? The committee's recommendations or the committee's recommendation was vetoed by the pres uh, presiding officer. So you will change subject with the object. The importance will shift. And we will use um, a phrase that will start with by. So again, most of the class is reading the book. The book is being read by most of the class. So in passive voice, we are going to use the second form of verb. While active voice helps to create clear and direct sentences, sometimes writers find that using an indirect expression is effective in some situations. So they choose passive voice. The passive voice is effective in those circumstances when the writer wants to highlight the action rather than the agent or actor performing the action. So um, there are some good reasons to use passive voice. When do we use passive voice? To emphasize the action rather than the actor. I can give you one example from business communication in which the uh, writer or the correspondent is supposed to use buffer statement. Let's say that you were trying to seal a deal with the company, but uh, unfortunately you cannot deal with them anymore. And you have to break this break. Uh, you have to break this bad news to them. So you cannot just simply tell them that we are not going to work with you any longer. You will try to use the passive tone. You will take it upon yourself that this is the reason we are breaking up. Right. So buffer statement is when you try to take a back seat in order to break up bad news. Now, the second uh, situation in which we use passive voice is to be tactful by not naming the actor. Right. The procedures were somehow misinterpreted. Then to describe a condition in which the actor is unknown. Right. Every year, thousands of people are diagnosed as having cancer to create an authoritative tone. Visitors are allowed after 9 p.m., right? Active voice is best suitable in informal, personal, and non-scientific writing situations. However, passive voice, uh, they are used to show authoritativeness if you do not know the actor um, and in such cases. And the rest of the exercises can be done by you. And uh, if you have any question, you can ask below.